Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 jailbreak tutorial. So we now have a new jailbreak allowing us to jailbreak the PS4 up to firmware version 12.52, which also includes 12.50. So previous jailbreak only worked up to 12.02. So that's two new firmware versions that can now be jailbroken using a Blu-ray disc, just like the previous jailbreak. So in this video, I'm going to do a full guide showing you how to set up this jailbreak from scratch on your PS4. And then of course, this video is part of a playlist which will be linked in the description, which has many other videos showing you how to take full advantage of a jailbroken PS4 so you can get the most out of it. That will be included in the video description. So check out those videos once you're done with this one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is head over to our notifications and our downloads. Make sure you do not have a system software version in your downloads that's waiting to be installed or is currently trying to be downloaded. If you do, just press the options button and select delete and then get rid of it to prevent it from trying to prompt you to install that update. Then we can go into our settings, go down to network settings and uncheck the box to connect to the internet. We want to be disconnected initially. Then we're going to scroll down to the system settings, automatic downloads and make sure all of these boxes are unchecked, especially system software update files and application update files. Again, to prevent it from trying to force you to update or force install an update that's downloaded. We wanna make sure both of those options are disabled. And then we can go into the system information section and check your system software version, which is your firmware version. You need to be on firmware 12.52 or lower. Anything higher, you cannot run the jailbreak. The jailbreak only works up to 12.52. So if you're on a higher firmware like 13.0 or 13.02, you will not be able to do this jailbreak and you'll have to wait for a future jailbreak to come out for your firmware. So as long as you're on 12.52 or lower, you will be able to do this jailbreak. So I was going to include a section on how to update your firmware to 12.52. I'll leave an unlisted version of that video in the description if you really want to learn how to update your firmware to 12.52. I'm not including it in this version of the video here because I don't think it's wise to update your firmware to 12.52 given the fact that this jailbreak is more unstable than previous jailbreaks. So if you're on an older firmware like 12.02 or lower, you can just set up this jailbreak on that firmware instead of updating to 12.52 and you'll get the option not only to load the new jailbreak but also the option to load the previous jailbreak which is also built into this exploit. So you have the ability to load both jailbreaks instead of updating to 12.52 where you'd be limited to only being able to load the new jailbreak. Okay, so now that you have the console ready, we just need to get the Blu-ray disc prepared. So to do that, we need to download the Hen Loader, the latest version. So download the ISO file to burn to the Blu-ray disc from this project, which will be linked in the description. And then you also need a blank Blu-ray disc, either a BD-R or BD-RE disc. It must be a Blu-ray disc, not a CD or DVD. And then just insert that into your Blu-ray writer. Once you have it inserted into your Blu-ray drive on your computer, the next step is to download a piece of software called Image Burn, IMG Burn, which will also be linked in the description. Now you can just burn it using the built-in utility within Windows, but generally Image Burn tends to be more reliable of a software to use. So that's the one I recommend here. So then we're just gonna open up Image Burn and select the option to write image file to disk. And then all we need to do is grab the ISO file and drag it into the software. Now, of course, if you cannot drag and drop, then simply select this button here to browse for the ISO manually and select it. Now you can leave the write speed on whatever it's defaultly set to, but if you have any write errors, then you can try lowering the write speed to a lower number, which might get you a better burn if you do end up having issues. I personally recommend verbatim discs because I've never had any problems with those particular discs. But anyway, once we have that ready, all we have to do is click the button here to write image file to disk. Keep the verify option on so that we can make sure that we get a good burn after we write it. Now it's a very small ISO, so it will not take long to write the image file to the disk. Only a few seconds and then it will just do a quick verification step. And once that's done, we should be good. Operation successfully completed. And we now have our Blu-ray disc. So all we need to do is take that Blu-ray disc out of our computer and insert it into the PS4. Now you can also take this opportunity to install some homebrew applications and of course any PS4 games that you want to install. So for instance, I recommend installing the homebrew store from pkg-zone.com. You just go to HB store and download for PlayStation 4 to download the package file. And then of course we can copy it over here. So I've got it here. I also have Minecraft and PT. 
as a fake package that I'm also going to install just so I can kind of demonstrate how to install and run fake packages here with the jailbreak, which you will be needing to do pretty soon. So all we've got to do here is get ourselves a USB drive, right click on it, go to properties and just ensure that the file system is XFAT format. But if it's not, you can right click and reformat it, but make sure you back up any data on the drive before reformatting. And then we can copy any package files that you want to install to the root of your USB drive. Okay, and once you have your packages copied over, you can unplug that USB and plug it into the PS4. Okay, so back on the PS4, if we head back out, we have our hen loader showing up here on the disc. So all we need to do is launch it. Now, when you first launch a Blu-ray disc, if you've never launched a Blu-ray on your PS4 in the first place, you may get a message that pops up saying you have to connect to the internet to enable a certain codecs. It will not allow you to actually launch the Blu-ray disc if you've not at least connected uh, your PS4 to the internet once to basically activate the licenses for the codex. So you will need to connect to the internet just briefly if you get that message and then launch the Blu-ray disc. And then once you have done that, you can then disconnect from the internet again. So just make sure you do that if you run into that error. If you get the message about BD-Live, just say yes to enable it. And if it doesn't let you run the Blu-ray disc because HDCP is disabled, then you'll have to re-enable that by going into the settings, going to system, and then enable HDCP. So that is required. So once you've done all of that, you should be able to launch the Blu-ray disc normally. So we launch our Blu-ray disc, we give it a few seconds to give us the menu. The menu pops up here, and then we just press the X button to run it and it initiates the exploit to reboot the PS4. So this means the kernel exploit failed to load successfully, in which case you should not continue to use the PS4 because it will likely crash. So just go ahead and power it off and restart the console. If it does crash, just press the power button twice to turn it back on and wait for it to recover. This is perfectly normal with these PS4 jailbreaks. This often happens. So all you have to do in that scenario restart the console and then just load the Blu-ray disc again until it works. Okay, second time lucky, we'll press X here. And there we go, that was a success and we have Gold Hen successfully loaded. It's amazing how fast this exploit loads when it is successful. So just like that, we're up and running with the jailbreak so I can press the PS button on the controller so that we can exit out of the Blu-ray application. And then I'll press options and close the application here. So it's up to you at this point if you want to eject the disc or just leave it in. Uh, you can probably just leave it in because if you eject the disc, then the next time you want to load the jailbreak, you'll have to reinsert it. So I think for most people, it's handy just to leave the disc in the console. So whenever you want to run the jailbreak again, it's always there, ready to be launched. Okay, so now that we have the jailbreak running, we can head back into our settings and go to the network settings and connect back to the internet. This is not necessary, but I would recommend it. It's just so much easier to use the jailbreak when you are connected to the internet. And if you go to system software updates, you don't have to worry about system updates because it will try to download the latest system update. However, it immediately fails and says it cannot download. And that's because Gold Hen has an update blocker that is built in, which will prevent system updates from being downloaded to the console. This update blocker is persistent. So even when you reboot the console, the update blocker will still be running. It was constantly running, preventing system updates from happening. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, if we go into our Gold Hen settings, we can go to the debug settings and the package installer and any applications, any package files that you have on the USB drive will show up in here. So we can just hit install all to install all of them. And we'll say yes to install all of the packages. Okay, so once all of those package files are installed, we should now have them on our home menu and we can launch them and it should run no problem there. So as you can see, Minecraft is running and that is using the jailbreak using Gold Hen to be able to load those fake packages. But that is how you get that set up. So next we have the homebrew store, which can be used to download other useful homebrew applications. And I do have an entire video that goes through some of the most useful homebrew applications to install using a jailbroken PS4 with the homebrew store. So check out that video to learn what the best homebrew applications are to get. However, for this one, we just want to grab the PS4 Cheats Manager, which will allow us to take full advantage of Gold Hen and get it fully set up. So once that's installed, we can press the Options button to close out of the homebrew store and we have it installed there. So if I press Options, Add to Folder, I like to just create a homebrew folder 
that I'm going to keep all of my homebrew applications inside just to keep everything organized. So homebrew, all of the homebrew applications go in the homebrew folder. And now we can run the PS4 Cheats Manager. Okay, and once this application loads up, we're going to go into the update section and go to update cheats patches and plugins from the internet and press X and then update the cheats from GitHub, which will download the latest cheat files online and get them installed. Over 3,000 cheat files installed. And then we'll do the same for the patches and that will get over 300 patches and then the plugins and that will get us 11 plugins installed. And that's all we need to do there. So if you want to apply any patches to your games, you can do so within the PS4 Cheats Manager by heading into the patches section and then pressing triangle to filter for games that you have installed. We'll use Bloodborne, of course. So I can enable things like a 60 FPS patch and also a resolution patch for 720p. Maybe disable motion blur and also skip the intro logo so we can get into the game faster. So you can apply these different types of patches to improve the gameplay experience of your PS4 games. Once they're applied, we can go ahead and close out of the PS4 Cheats Manager. So finally, taking a look at the Gold Hen settings, uh, besides the debug settings, which contains the package installer and the ability to enable the debug settings menu, we also have the Cheats settings. I like to show title ID labels for title ID and app version, which just shows the game ID and the version of the game that the game is running on the home page here which is quite handy but it does slow down the menu if you have too many applications installed you can also update the cheats from within here as well then we have the plugin settings so we can enable the plugins loader and the game patch plugin to be able to use our plugins we can also update the plugins archive from here as well then we have the game overlay where we can enable an fps counter and system information like ram usage cpu usage and temperatures but i normally do not uh, bother with showing those and then there's also the scan lines for retro games that you can enable. You've got the server settings like the FTP server and bin loader server, which I recommend enabling so you can remotely access the file system of the console uh, through FTP, as well as send payloads remotely to execute on the console with the bin loader. There's the Klog server, which I normally leave disabled unless you're a developer, it's not really that useful. And then also we have the settings menu which I would normally enable the BD app auto kill option because this will allow you to run the jailbreak faster as it will automatically close the disc player app once you have loaded the jailbreak. And then finally, we have the date and time options where you can update the date and time if your clock is out of sync. So that's another option that's all added in there. So that's your gold hen settings. And then finally, just to show what that's all done, if we go ahead and load a game, we'll be able to see the cheats, patches and plugins in action. So first of all, if I load up this game Bloodborne, we can see we get our FPS counter, we get our patches being applied that we enabled in the PS4 Cheats Manager for 60 FPS. It skips the intros and we can also hit continue here and it's now running the 60 FPS patch with disabled motion blur. Okay, so once we're in the game, you can see that our FPS counter is above 30. So normally this game runs at 30 FPS, but we're running at 60 FPS right now, so it's a lot smoother. And then also, of course, if I hold down the share button, it brings up the cheat menu. So all of the cheats we installed now show up. So we can enable cheats like the master code, you know, infinite health, infinite stamina, one hit kill. And then you just press circle to return back into the game with those cheats now applied. So as I'm sprinting, my stamina bar is not going down. And you can see my blood echoes are maxed out at 99999. So all of that is applied and then you can just hold down the share button to get back into the cheats menu and then disable any specific cheats that you no longer want enabled. And you can see those cheats are now disabled. The stamina is now going down. So that is the advantage of fully setting up Gold Hen is having the ability to apply these patches to your games to get a better gameplay experience and also apply any cheats that you want for the games that are available. So that's what you've got access to right there. So last but not least, if you restart the PS4, the jailbreak will no longer be running because this is a tethered jailbreak. All jailbreaks for the PS4 and PS5 are tethered jailbreaks, which basically means that when you restart the console, the jailbreak is no longer running. So our installed games and homebrew applications are still here, but of course they will not run because we're no longer running the jailbreak after rebooting. So all we need to do is simply run the Blu-ray disc again, and that will trigger the jailbreak. And then, of course, once that is loaded, we just give that some time to actually load the exploit. 
And once it loads, it automatically closes the disc player application because we enabled the option in Gold 10 previously to auto close the disc player app. So that gets the jailbreak running faster this time. And as you can see, we're back up and running. And if I load Minecraft again after the reboot, we can see it is now loading. So that's all you've got to do to get the jailbreak running after rebooting the console is just load the disk again and wait for the jailbreak to complete. However, there is one thing you can do, which is use rest mode instead of turning the console off. It doesn't always work perfectly, but it is another option. So if you simply put the console into rest mode instead of turning it off, then it will actually retain the jailbreak. So you just put the console into rest mode and then when you next want to use it, you just recover from rest mode turn it back on, it will recover from rest mode and the jailbreak will still be running so that you don't have to load it again. So that's what a lot of people do to not have to reload the jailbreak is just use rest mode instead of turning the console off. But eventually you will have to turn the console off at some point and when you do, it's not too big a deal to just run the Blu-ray disc and get it back up and running within a few seconds. So that is all that is required there to rerun the jailbreak. So that is the general basic setup guide there for how to get the jailbreak up and running up to firmware 12.52 on the PS4. I highly recommend checking out my other videos in the series. Again, there's a playlist linked in the video description, which has my other videos showing you how to take full advantage of a jailbroken PS4. It shows you things like handy homebrew applications to have installed on the console and what they all do, as well as videos on how to run Linux on the PS4. So you can get a whole other operating system running alongside, which gives you a whole host of additional functionality, as well as being able to run your PS4 games, DLC and updates, PS2 and PS1 games and other retro games on the console and many, many other useful features. So check out the playlist link in the description to take this jailbreak to the next level. And of course, big thanks to the developers who made this exploit possible. We have 15432 for implementing the exploit, the flow for releasing the exploit in the first place, and of course, Sistro for the latest Gold 10 release that supports this jailbreak. So that's going to do it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.